Hello. Hello. Good morning. It's 8.41 and this dustbin recycle waste plan for Dennis um, is looks like he's doing laps of this road. <laughs> well, rubbish laps because there's no like circling going on. It's just literally straight down the road and straight back up again. Uh, I, I was lulled this morning, absolutely lulled into a false sense of security because it looked like it had been raining, which it had, and it also I could see snow on the tops of the hills on the moor and everything, which is beautiful. But because it had been snow, because it had been raining, I thought maybe that would have like melted the ice on my car instead of kind of welding it on into some kind of weird magical sheet which I kind of liked but it was also um, a bit of a pain to get off to be fair so yeah I tried to do it with windscreen wipers and then remembered that people walk past my car <laughs> so that I did it in a more sensible manner stop for the lollipop my glasses are steaming up Yeah, so I'm a bit discombobulated. I have been for a few days, and now I thought it might be a good opportunity to talk about um, how the celestial kind of things, um, stars, the moon, and all that kind of thing, do actually affect us. Now. I don't like to come across as a hippie and I don't like to just accept things at face value. But if there's a scientific basis for things, then that interests me. And I do think that there is a scientific basis on energy from the moon and things like that affecting us because it affects the tides, right? And it's probably a bit of a cliche, but tides of water and we're like 60-70% water or whatever so why why wouldn't it? it it seems more kind of gullible and naive to dismiss that kind of thing out of hand because we don't understand it so yeah um, but anyway this I'm finding it really difficult because I've got the brain traffic um, so I might try and explain to you what it feels like having the brain traffic um, Sometimes, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling because of brain traffic, but I'm going to start, right, okay, from an example. I was talking to a friend on um, Sunday about, well, I walked into a room and I instantly got a memory and a feeling and kind of a sound memory of um, singing Kung Fu fighting in that room. And because I don't edit, right, I just came out with it. And I asked my friend, because he's an artist and I'm an artist, if he ever gets that thing, and I'd be interested to know if anyone else does get this, where you've worked on a drawing or a painting or a piece of work, and then you've left it and you've come back a day or so later and started working on another bit, the same bit that you were like going over a bit again, and I get a memory of what, and it's pretty much always an audio kind of memory of what was playing on the radio or, or what I was watching on the telly at the same time or a conversation that I've been having. And it's like that's kind of associated and embedded in that part of the drawing. Now, because I had that conversation and I didn't think of it as in the kind of association to being linked to kind of audio before. I then got to thinking about it this morning when I was cleaning my teeth and thinking, well, if I think like that when I've been working on the same bit of drawing, maybe my brain traffic is just all the different memories of things that I've been thinking or listening to or doing while I've been like cleaning my teeth, laid up and lots of associations going on at the same time. because. 
it's like now sticking with the audio thing I used to um, I don't know if anyone remembers from the, the late 90s dance EJ right and you'd have like you'd make a dance track by layering up sounds and sometimes you just get a bit overzealous and you'd end up just making it sound like you just couldn't you couldn't comprehend anything because there was too many noises there so adding another noise didn't really fix it it made it worse until none of it sounded like anything so what you had to do was just like remove the noises until you found it, it sounded all right again. And I think that's what I need to do with the brain traffic, so I need to strip it back. But it's really difficult because by thinking about stripping it back, I'm adding another layer to the noise. Yeah, this has got a bit strange, hasn't it? But that is, that is kind of how my brain is at the minute. And when I've got this, which I, I'm blaming, just to link back, I'm blaming for this Blood Wolf Super Moon or whatever the name of the band is, <laughs> right? Yeah. I'm totally blaming that for discombobulating me. <laughs> oh, but yeah, when I get this, I, I kind of feel on edge. I feel like I've got a bit of a sensory overload going on. And so I kind of find it hard to move out of my head and do things. So I can find myself like, like last night I got, I got back from work and I just sat in my car, I just couldn't, didn't want to leave my car and then I got in the house and I didn't take my coat or anything off, I just sat there and I just couldn't move from there and I just kind of retreat from safe place to safe place and feel kind of unable to move, it, yeah, so it's quite, it's quite debilitating really. It is, I, I, but I kind of find it a bit fascinating and I think this is how you've got to be about things like that. It's just another thing that's like, whoa, the world is pretty weird and amazing and our brains are, you know, who knows what's going on in there, you know. I, I do still have a sense of wonder about it even though it's getting on my nerves a little bit. It's just, yeah, I'm just observing it really, rather than getting stressed about it. And I think, yeah, the same could be definitely said for a lot of, a lot of things that people go through. It's resisting it that causes the issue and getting, letting it get to you. And often if you just think, I'm feeling really sad at the minute and, you know, no one's my friend and why aren't so-and-so messaged me and we were supposed to go out to a party and no one's bothered sorting anything out and getting all upset about it. You just think, well, that's, that's kind of the thing. That's just that's just the thing. In the grand scheme of things, it don't matter. Why am I feeling this way? Okay, I know why. I, you know, I've had expectations that, that haven't been managed properly by other people and I feel disregarded or whatever, whatever the situation is. And um, this is just triggered by someone's Facebook post <laughs> of the day. <laughs> right. Um, and then, all you need to do is just ride it out. The, the reason that you're feeling negative, because you can't feel negative, right? Your feelings are feelings, and positivity and negativity are things that you overlay your feelings with thoughts. You know, that, that whole thing where um, breaking up with someone and falling in love, or, or, essentially the same feeling. It's just the, the connotations that we associate with them at, at different stages you know depending on the situation and depending what our thoughts are at the time so you can reframe that i think this is probably why i don't don't tend to take like antidepressants or anything now because i'm pretty sure that this is a symptom of depression <laughs> but i'm just kind of observing it and not beating myself up about it like I would have probably a year ago actually. I'm just think, oh, you know, I can get through the day. And last night I exercised. I actually exercised. I put on all my new running stuff. Still not got any running shoes, but yeah. <laughs> and I did um, day one of the 30 day shred. So there you go, I've told you now. So I have got some kind of accountability. Get through. There we go. <laughs> 
Oh, he's turning left. Ah, there you go. Right. Try and be helpful. You've stalled your car. Right, okay. Yeah, okay. So yeah, he exercised. I, I didn't even get upset, really. I kind of thought I was going to get upset about having to exercise and, but, and felt a bit frozen, but actually, I did it and I rewarded myself by Chinese, with Chinese leftovers in the bath. And it was good. <laughs> I think I was asleep before midnight as well, which was good too. Okay. That's all right, we've got it though. Makes the cactus man though. Lots of puddles. Right, okay, I'm going. It's 8.52, so I need to be a quick one. But I'm sorry if this has been a bit kind of metaphysical and deep, but that's sometimes the way it goes in my life. Anyway, I'll speak to you later on in the week. Bye.